Promotional consideration paid for by the following. It's me. Tomorrow, I will dream in green, yellow oceans, and froth on the beach. It's me. Or beauty. I'm an individual. What is love? It's me. Beauty. Like meaning. Oh, and white. I need designer perfume. It's me. Shine. Buy Helmet Shine. Helmet Shine is a fantasy. Helmet Shine is a spectacle. Helmet Shine is you. Is you. Oh, if you shine. desire it. I'm an individual. What I is love? I'm the right. space between your ears. Meaning. Advertising. People on beaches. Shine. Let the children die. Tomorrow. I'm the white What's rabbit. I dream in black and white. Shine. Own a mystic fury. It's me. You're beautiful. That's enough. Shine. Buy Helmet Shine. Shut up and sit down. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Shift. It's episode 384. And I, of course, am your host, your funky leader, the greatest man who's ever lived. It's me, it's Matt, and I gotta tell you, I'm pumped for the show. You believe me when I say that, right? I'm excited. I'm full of energy. I'm just uproariously going and getting it. That's why I'm doing it. Because with me, as always, as is always doing it as well, it's the Light Bear, Light Bringer, the Light Bear, Bringer, the Beastmaster, Third Shift. It's Eric, and he's here to tell us how his week was, even though I already know the answer to this question. Hey, Eric, what you been up to this week? Hey, buddy. How's it going? Hey, everybody out there listening to the old show today. Welcome aboard. I hope you've been having a good time. It's been a week for me. It's been a, a kind of a funk. Haven't played any video games really that, to note, except for very, very, very densely on two days, and then the rest of the week has been I haven't I haven't even touched. I didn't even I haven't even looked at it. I, I I'm not kidding you. Every time I have gotten on at all, which has been very rare, I just went straight up to media, straight to the shows, watched a show, went to sleep, or did whatever. So. This week's been kind of tragic for video games, but I did get some in, folks. I'm telling you what, I did get some. And uh, the two days that I got in some good times was playing some Monster Hunter Rise. All right, me and uh, Shay really tackled in there, and we finally made it. We got to the be- a point I'm so excited about, and we haven't touched it since. We're finally at the uh, the point where you get to the uh, the the apex versions of monsters, and you're and you're doing the big end game stuff. That's where we're at. We just broke into it. Got into the Sunbreak uh, DLC uh, content, so there's new monsters to go fight. There's all the Apex stuff to start doing to actually get the real final gear that you, you know, you're going to want to actually play as. So this is where we finally get to start making our, our for real build. Very exciting. But of course, we haven't played since we got to that point. We we're very excited, but it was late. It was like, ah, we got to call it here. It's too much. So dang. I'll tell you what. Can't wait to play it again. Alan Wake 2, final draft gotten there that was on the other day that i got to play before you know i stopped playing games and caring about what's going on anymore and i had a lot of fun but i i I got to the subway area and it's been enjoyable but i didn't enjoy that's like my least enjoyable area of the of everything in the game so when i got back to us kind of like ah dang it i gotta get through this whole slog again because that area while very cool for the uh, the tools it uses to get you through everything, I don't know. I feel like uh, it had a couple like spots that were kind of iffy, like kind of cheap that got you, and you, you know, you kind of like whatever. But this time, I already knew what was going on, so I didn't get got, and I just kind of went through everything. It was so ten times faster, a million times faster. I was very very happy with that, and I popped out and got to the next area, and I went. Whew, that wasn't so bad. I was dreading that area, and it wasn't the best because I didn't like it, you know, so much the first time around. But man, got through it, and now I'm back to some of the best spots, some of the best spots ever. But once again, I stopped because it was late, and I was like, "All right, next time." But it wasn't the next time. It hasn't been a next time, man. No next time. So I'm in two great areas in the two games I've been kind of, you know, playing as you all know for the last few weeks. Can't wait to do it again. Unfortunately, I'm coming into Tax End which is going to ruin my life for a whole nother week. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll push through it. Maybe I won't. Either way, anime is always there to save me. And I have been watching that. The new season, you know, whatever, winter season I think it's called, has started up. A lot of trash anime, a lot of, like, same crap. You know, every, every, every season it's like, hey, check out the next. I've been drawn into this world, and I'm a toaster fighting, getting levels for da-da-da. There's, like, a thousand of those. 
And some are fun because they'll put a spin on it. But there's also a few classics like Mashal's got a new season, and I love that one. Uh, the Elite Classroom's a really good one. Um, losing the rest, but there's a few like really solid ones in there that I was really stoked about. So looking forward to seeing those. And, of course, watching the first and second episodes of some of those this last week has been fun. And with that being said, real life-wise with family, not much. It's just been kind of a slog. We just go to school, go to work. Kids had a whole bunch of school days this week. Lucky them. I did not. So, of course, it doesn't really ding on my bell of who gives a crap. <sighs> and last but not least, did some D&D this last weekend. Went over to Buddy James's house. But, uh, you know, as I figured was going to happen, you know, tried to kill me. Because going there, perfectly clear, no problems. It was easy peasy. It wasn't a big issue. My wife, you know, like I said, didn't want me to go because it was just really bad weather a couple days before. And she was probably right because on the way home, it was not great. It was not great at all. It was very bad, in fact. Uh, the Round Lake Road, which is like a road, you know, he's off of. Not good conditions. Not great. Made it through that. Fine. Okay, I'm going to get the highway. Everything's safe. It's, it's fine. I just had to go real slow. Be careful. And then one highway, 127, was fine. Then I get to the second boot, the one that goes towards Grand Rapids, etc. Not bad. Then I get to 69 South. I can't see the highway. It's gone. <laughs> Just snow and flurries <laughs> everywhere. Snow everywhere. Can't see where anything is. Slipping a little bit, feeling the truck kind of do the sh- sh- So I'm in four-wheel drive going 70, which, if you don't know, truck and four-wheel drive, you're not supposed to go over 55. So I'm hearing the gears. It's like, but I'm like, well, I have to because otherwise I'm going to screw up and I'm going to slip. And off I go. End of my life. Made it, of course, to my back roads. They weren't great either. It was still snowing extremely heavily. Had to drive real slow to get home. Of course, it took me like an hour and ten minutes. I was not happy. I was not happy when I got home. I was not happy about that scenario because I was already grumpy going into it. So it didn't help. But I had fun while we were there. Yeah. So I kind of came up, but then I went way back down having to spend an hour and 10 minutes to get back home when I knew that was going to happen, but I got kind of pressured into going. So I was like, fine, just doing it, whatever. So it's one of those weird scenarios. Great time there. Not a great time home. I don't know, man, but we did it. And it was fun while we were there. So that's like, we'll take that away. That's the key takeaway. A good time doing some D and D with some friends. That was fun for sure. And that's been it. That's my week folks. There you go, Matt. How about you, buddy? Well, like you said, it was supposedly going to be like Snowmageddon here. In the city, it wasn't too bad, but it was bad enough to cancel the things that I had going on over the weekend. Uh, There was something, the snowy day, that Friday or whatever it was, Friday night, I was supposed to go to a symphony show, was driving over to mom's house to go pick her up. And, you know, it wasn't even bad. Like, we've seen Michigan winters. Everything's fine. You know, oh, it's snowing. Okay, who cares? It's Michigan. It's what's going to happen. But... I'm driving down friggin' what what road was Bircham? Just a it's just a road. It's just a road. Some Saturn pulls out in front of me, like g- lime green Saturn SUV. And we're just going. It's a 25 mile per hour road. We're just going down the road. I flick my glance up to the rear view. I look back, and now this Saturn SUV is at a 45 degree angle, just sliding to the curb. And I went, whoa. I took my foot off the gas, I touched the brake a little bit. No nothing, no problems. Just watching this fool just... Mm, and then he pulls off to... What did you What did you do? What happened? And as he's at 45 degrees, his tires are like, like going the other way. So like you're not even doing what you're supposed to be doing. So I have to imagine you did something stupid. Mm-hmm. But if people are this stupid on the roads, I don't even know what's happening. And then, like you said, drove to D&D the very next night. Eric's the country boy. I'm the the city guy. Quote fingers, because Lansing's a small city. It's not it's not anything. Everything around here is fine. Everything East Lansing, everything's fine. So I'm like, oh well, I'll go out to D and D. Cool. Go down Saginaw, go up, go up Abbott, and then it turns into not a country road because it's still paved and everything, but it turns into country time. So I'm like, do 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 do, just driving, and like, oh, the road's covered with snow, but some idiot. Of course, went swerve off. So the only wheel ruts are the swerve off. So even though I'm driving like a normal person, <laughs> why? 
This isn't even my fault. This is some other idiot's fault, but because of snow and how tires work. And the ruts and how it all goes, yeah. So for me, the drive there was, it wasn't stressful. Like, you know, even if I went off the road a little bit, it's not like there's a cliff drop off. I would have just gone, dugga, 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 and gone, gone back on. But for me, the drive there was worse. Driving back, Round Lake seemed fine to me. Got on the highway, and it was the highway to the city, so everything was fine. No problems. No yeah, nothing. 127's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't 127. That was the problem. Once you got to country land, then it was... Yeah. <sighs> It was a nightmare. And again, I think it was one of those things where, you know, even in Lansing, sure, they got the plow trucks, they got the salt trucks, but there wasn't even all that much accumulation here. So I feel like it was like it always is. Uh, Lansing's here. Oh, we're going to get blasted by snow. And it either goes south or it goes north. There's some kind of like weird vortex around here where where if it's going to be disgusting, we're going to get some of it. Uh, but north and south, like even immediately north and south, because Langsburg's not that far north and Charlotte's not that far south. But it's like, boom, disgusting. We got boom, way more. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. In the middle, it's okay. Come here. Yeah, it's wild. It, it, and it's not like an, an exaggeration at all. It's strange yeah, yeah. the way the weather patterns work around Lansing, and then north, south, east, west of it. It's, it's really weird. But it's been that way since we were kids, you know, since I remember. So, But like you said, D&D was fun. I was sad that it was such a short session, but I feel like we got in, we did the battle, we explored the town like this much, and then went to the new thing. And I'm like, but I feel like the character is just, I'm guy with sword, and you are, I'm magic lady. And you have a little bit more, because you got the book and stuff. I want, I, like, story. I want more story. And we're getting there, I'm sure. But it just had that feel of, like, do the battle. Okay, you found a thing. All right, go over there. There's a guy. He's, he's doing the thing. Okay, now you're at the end. What are you going to do? Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm sure we'll get there, and I don't want to critique because I'm not the DM, but I would have spent one day in the town before we did what we did. Yeah, yeah. I thought for sure that's what we were going to do. I thought we were going to do one day of just moseying about, trying to figure out what we want to do, mm-hmm. and then have him hijinks us into the next thing and then go from there. But instead, we just went straight into there. So I was like, all right, well, I guess we'll maybe see this town again if we survive, or, mm-hmm. or if, maybe not, because who knows? Maybe we'll end up in a portal. And God knows where the next area is. So. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to critique either, because I did have fun. But it just kind of feels like, hey, make make this character. You got this cool backstory. I got this backstory. All right. What are you going to do? You, look, there's goblins here. Fight them. All right. There's a thing. Go this door. Touch touch the door. Go in. You found a thing. Yeah, I, I And I, we won't say more on this, because I know it bored. You know, you guys don't know what the hell we're even talking about. But I think it's going to be up to us to incorporate our backstory into the story. Mm-hmm. I think he has a narrative he wants to do. And we'll just kind of have to play our own stuff into it yeah, yeah. and change slightly, kind of change the direction of things. Pull it and a little bit And he'll have to adapt to because, it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But then on the video game front, I feel like, like you, that I haven't done much of anything. But it's because I only do one thing. And I play at Baldur's Gate and it just overwhelms me with this content and these amazing experiences. Like I've told Eric, like I tell everybody, I come home and I play Baldur's Gate until it's time to go to bed. That's it. That's all I do. I don't work out. I don't eat dinner. Like, I, I get up. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. Time to start getting ready for bed. Oh, I'm hungry. Let me eat an orange. No, 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 no. Okay, let me brush my teeth. All right, I guess I got to go to bed. What did I do today? Nothing. But it wasn't nothing because I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, and it's just so good. But I, the only negative I will say is I told Derek this off air. I got to Baldur's Gate. It's Act 3 now. All right, what's in the town? Literally everything is in the town. Even, like, the town before the town, there's, like, ten quests to do. And now in town, there's, like, a thousand quests. So it's, like, Act 1, which is where Eric is with the goblins and all the things, and a million things you can find, a million things you can do, like, there's that much. And then there's Act 2, which had, I would say, maybe half as much stuff to do, because you're in a certain zone, there's a certain thing you got to do. But I feel like they took all of that... And then now that is Act 3. Like, all that amount of content. And, and you know, part of it's me. Because I see a named NPC, which is almost all of them. And I got to go talk to them. I got to go see what everybody has to say. And, oh, there's an animal on the street. There's a cat. Let me go talk to the cat. There's a, there's a rat in this house. Let me go talk to the rat. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do this other thing. And it's wonderful. And it's amazing. But I feel like I'm getting lost in it at some points. Some days it's like, all right, I'm going to do these four quests, bing, 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 bing. 
and I'm done, and I, I, I did it. But there's sometimes where, what's over here? What's over there? Oh, it's something really cool. Even one part of one quest, you got to go investigate some murders. That's all I'll say, no spoilers. And you go to one place, and I always have Potion of Animal speaking. It's always active, because the animals in this game, they're so much fun to talk to. I love it. You go into this murder victim's house, there's a rat. I'm like, hey, rat, what's up? He goes, hey, are you in the new cheese dropper? Because the old cheese dropper, he left a while ago. And you have this conversation with the rat about what happened in this place. And I'm like, man, this rat's awesome. But he's out one cheese dropper. Let me go. What's in my inventory? How many? Let me go back to camp. How many cheeses do I have? And I never do this. I'm not this guy. But I got all my cheeses. And I went around the house. And he's got like this big rug in like the, the front area. Dropped all my cheeses on the rug for this rat. It's not going to do anything. The rat will be there no matter what. But I was just like, this is a moment. He is the cheese dropper. He, I'm his cheese dropper now. Mm-hmm. I got to drop my cheeses for this rat. You did it. And it was just a beautiful little like, hey, there's the RP that I didn't get <laughs> in our actual sessions. Now I've RP'd being the cheese dropper for this rat. It was great. It was wonderful. Cheese dropper for the rat. I love it, man. But man, it's just been wonderful. And I'll talk more about it on the What You're Playing, even though I can't go into spoilers because Eric will eventually play this. But man, the romance... In this game, the one option that I've taken, it's so good. I'll, I'll say who it is. It's with Lazelle. That's who I'm going with. What are you talking about? Because I'm like, you know what? Everybody's always talking about Shadowheart. Mm-hmm. And then we're talking about the bear, the druid, you know, or Astarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always about them. And then a few I hear about Carl. Like, I don't hear nobody talk about her. So I said, you know what? I know it's just some dumb fling. You know, it, basically, you just talk to her a few times. And all of a sudden, she's wanting to go, you know, do the thing with you. And you mm-hmm. do the thing. And, and I'm like, but. I'm sticking with it. I was like, I'm sticking with this. There, there's got to be more to this if I just stick with it, and we'll get somewhere more than just being a, a you know, whatever you are. And you should, because that's what I thought. I was like, all right, I'm going to go with Shadowheart. She, I don't really like her that much, but you know, she's the one that's around camp the most until you meet like Carlac, who I was like, well, it's too late now. But Lazelle kind of comes in, and I went, ah, she's mean. It'll be a fling thing, and then I'll go with Shadowheart. But I kept sticking with Lazelle, and it wasn't like, it's so hard to describe, because like in video games, when you think of like a romance you could have with all these characters, it's always shallow. Mm -hmm. You say things they like, and at the end of the game, you get to see, you know, like a a quick little like five second sex scene like Mass Effect. And it's like, oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. But this one, it starts out like that. You're like, oh, hey, you know, she's just a fling. It'll be cool. But then as it progresses, she comes out of her shell and the ways you can respond to her and the things she says to you, I'm like, holy sh! Because she starts out so hard, like a rock. Like, you know you know how she is. Oh, yeah. But the way she comes out of that, and like the way her voice actress especially, the way she says the lines, the names that she has for you as you get more you know, attached to each other, it's incredible. It's great. I'm like, I'm wa- watching it going, man, I could never do anything else. I can't do anything else because this is right. This is like it. And, you know, everybody comes on to you at certain points because it's a game and that's how romances pop up. But I'm like, no, absolutely not. Because Lazelle's going to get mad and she and I mean something. Like I mean something to her. So I know if I do this, it's going to break her heart. And I won't lie. There's one for a trophy. I did it just to reload the save. And her reaction, I was like, nope, never again. I can't, no. Even if it is just for a trophy pop, no, because I'm going to feel bad all week. And it sounds stupid, but it makes you feel bad, like real bad. And not a lot of games do that. And I was, I'm, so I'm invested. And it's, it's just great. It's well done. It's well written. Like I said, the name she has for you eventually. I just had a really awesome scene in Baldur's Gate with the sunrise. Perfect. Beautiful. So now, like I said, even if I do another playthrough... How could I pick anybody else? Because I know this, this is it. This is like perfect. Don't do it though, man. Don't fall into a Persona 5 trap. Uh, I can't. <laughs> well, here's the other thing. Last thing, and I'll, be, and I'll be done. I was, you know, I'm, I'm on the Baldur's Gate 3 subreddit now because it just keeps popping up because it knows that I search for Baldur's Gate 3 stuff. And I found out there's a place you can get, should I say anything? There's a place you can get an item. And if it's in her inventory at the end of the game, you get a bonus scene with her and the results of this item. And I'm like, 
I got I, there's a, another side quest. You can do something with this item, mm-hmm. and I did that already, so I don't have it. And it's like seventy hours ago in my no. game that I would have gotten this item. So I'm like, even if I do play through again, I have to be with her now have the item. to get the item to see the scene so it can be mm, how it's supposed to be. Ah, oh, it's just great, and, and everything in that game is great. And I'm I think I'm at max level now because I'm level twelve, and I think that's the max. And I'm just. I said it before. I'm just ruining everything. I fought the big super secret boss. I don't know that it's a secret, but I won't say who it is. I just destroyed him. It's, I mean, not like in, imminently destroyed him, but I was never in danger. No problems, no nothing. Everything, oh, we're, we're bad guys. We're going to jump you in a big group. Yeah, but you're dead. You're just, you're just dead. Uh, nobody can touch me. It's great. It's wonderful. I love the game. Uh, emotionally, combat-wise, story-wise, snarky responses, being a drow and a monk and having those responses to get back and forth. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. It was a great week. I love my life. Speaking of great weeks, guess what came out this week, everybody? It's finally here. It's Bulletstorm VR. People can fly. Have finally popped this sucker out. I, I told everybody, you know when this comes out, I got to play it again. I watched people doing streams of Bulletstorm, and then I was like, stop watching streams. So you can do the VR and, and actually get maybe get some moments again and some chuckles again because, you know, it's been quite a while since me and you've played Bulletstorm, which, of course, if you don't know, me and Matt love that game. I played through it several times. I don't know if Matt did or not, but I know for sure I did. He did it twice. So we've both played through that one several times, having a great time. Dang it, folks. Dang it, folks. All the reviews are saying this game is complete garbage. No. Trash. No. Yes, they are. They're saying it's the worst VR game ever. (sighs) Da 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 da. And now I'm like, no way. No way. This can't happen to me, Matt. I I was excited. I wanted to get this game. I was gonna, I was gonna whip people to me. I was gonna kick them in the face, knock them into stuff. I was gonna hear Grayson, you know, saying his crazy lines again. Uh, the Colonel or General, whoever his name is, I, I, I forget. It doesn't stick in my head. But him and his just whack job lines. Oh my gosh, it was gonna be awesome. But I'm scared now. Do I? Do I still get it? Because I was gonna get this game, but I'm buying a million games this year. I mean, a million. But everybody. Everybody so far is like, oh, garbage game. And I'm like, do I have the money to buy this? And I might enjoy it. I still might enjoy it, but I'm scared. And I think that's the thing. Because if you remember, people didn't really like Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. They're like, oh, it's just this game. You and I are diehard Bulletstormers. And you're the only VR guy. I can't get it to tell you about it. So you have to get it to tell me about it. And then eventually, sometime like in 20 years, when something happens at your house and I like show up to your house, you're like, look at this. Look at this 20-year-old technology, man. Check it out. Bulletstorm is pretty cool. And I'll go, woo, yeah, cool. I'm whipping the stuff. I got my hands wiggling around. Wee. Uh, So I'm so torn, everybody. I was hoping so badly I could come on here and tell you, you got to get this. You got to play the VR version. It's going to be so great. But I don't know now. I'm split because here it is. It's ready and it's available. So if you got the v- PSVR 2, if you got the MetaQuest or uh, whatever the hell you got, I think it's on most everything, you know, VR-wise, it's there. But uh, do your homework. Are you a Bulletstorm, you know, vet like us? Do you love that kind of humor and that craziness? This might still be for you. I'm not sure. I got to do a little more homework. I want to go like into depth on a few, find a couple people I respect at least a little bit because I ain't gonna lie, I don't respect most of them that much, but a few of them I do and see if they've done any reviews on it and then see what they say, uh, good or bad, and then I'll make my choice, folks. And I know I told you I was gonna get this and I was gonna rock it, but I'm buying so many games, I can't, I can't buy this one if it is indeed actually trash because I'm not kidding you when I say there's at least 12 games this year I gotta buy. And that's way beyond the budget I'm supposed to be uh, spending, so just so you know. But it's there, everybody. Bulletstorm freaking VR. If you like crude, crazy humor, think Duke Nukem and stuff, kicking people off freaking every cliff, kicking people into every spike, every cactus, everything there is, that's what this game's about. Shooting people, doing all sorts of cool combos, but now you're doing it in VR, in your face, whipping around your hands, doing the little whip beam, that's what this all is, all right? It's first-person adventure, all sorts of crude, crazy stuff. Y'all should know what Bulletstorm is. And if you don't, go do yourself a favor and check it out a little bit. But it's there for you. So here's how you do it, Eric. You, you say, man, you know, I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling down because my PSVR 2 is not getting enough love. 
I needed to get a game for it so I can use it so I'll feel better. And then also my mental health will improve because I'm playing a fun game. So this is a health item, Eric. It's for health. And we know you can spend any amount of money on health. That's right. And in doctors, we can spend anything. Doesn't matter what it is. There's no cost set aside for doctor expenditures. And this is a doctor expenditure. You drive down that road, that's how you get yourself to Bulletstorm VR with no cost to you, no no mental cost, no 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 repercussions, no nothing. No back end cost, no repercussions, no nothing. Yes. Solid easy buy, free bird flying. But another solid easy buy that I'm going to tell everybody about is Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, which comes out today, the 18th is recording this, developed by Ubisoft Montpellier, published by Ubisoft for PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox Series 1, Xbox Series S and X, and Nintendo Switch. It's out for everything except for mobile. And I got to tell you, when the first buzz was going around, I went, it can't be that good. It looks great, but it can't be that good. And then I watched some reviews, and I went, oh, it's... It's that good. It just shot a, a little, just dropped a bomb mm-hmm. into my plans because my plans were to not touch anything until Infinite Wealth comes out. And now this is here. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching the footage of it. And it's all Metroidvania style, flying through with awesome 2D fast action combat, stylish combat. When you're doing your special moves, the camera zooms in tight as he's charging up. It's flashy. It's like anime or comic book style. When I think of Prince of Persia, I think of it's always been stylish, but it's kind of realistic. The presentation isn't like, wow, like blow your mind. This is that. All the energy that the previous presentations have lacked, it's here in this one. It's it's colorful, it's stylish, it looks cool. When you're fighting big giant bosses, they can do awesome, cool, stylish cutscene moves to you just like you can do to them. It's amazing. Watch the IGN review. I'll, I'll say that. I'll give them props because they showed off a ton of stuff that made this look amazing. I've watched some other reviews like the Gaming Bolt review. It looks jankety because the guy can't play it. But IG interview looked great. Did you see that you can go to your map? So if you get to a spot that you can't actually access and you know you can later because you're going to get a skill upgrade that's going to allow you to go do the thing, you can take a picture and then boom, bam, you got it right there. That's the biggest and best part of this game. Like I was watching and I went, all right, cool, a Metroidvania. When I'm in the mood for a Metroidvania, I'll probably pick this up because it's going to be good. And then they went, hey, yeah. One of the first upgrades you get, you just take a literal picture of the room and you stick it to your map. So it's not like any Metroid game where you go, why couldn't I get through that door? Was it Super Missile Door? Uh, Let me go back. Now I got a Super Missile. Oh, no, it was a Super Bomb Door. Now you know. Like I thought of this when I was playing, it was years ago now, when I was playing the Guacamelee games. Because same thing, it's a Metroidvania. You get these powers that unlock certain colored doors and colored areas. And I would always go, now that I got purple, was that a purple block off there? No, it was blue. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about it because you have the picture of the room and you can just blow it up to full screen and see, oh, yeah, that's got the little slashy deal. I just got the slashy deal. Here I go. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to go do the thing. It looks great. People are saying the story is not that great, but the action looks amazing. And I've seen, I've heard people say just on Twitter before I saw any videos, they said, Man, you know, this really turned into Celeste at the end. And watching that IGN review, I went, oh, because they show this room with like these big spiked columns that go up and down. And you'll go and kind of do a wall slide on one, jump, double jump, dash, dash to the other, hang on that wall, dash, dash, double jump. It, it, looks, it looks so like so much fun. Just the, the combat itself looks fun. And then these traversal mechanics look amazing. It reminds me of the Guacamelee challenge rooms, like the traversal challenges there. Just a blast. Looks awesome. Looks like it'll be worth any kind of amounts of pennies that Ubisoft will want for this. Just a, a, a banger. A killer app here. Boom. Just to start the year off. Right there. Bing, bam. And ever since it got revealed, I've been excited for it. People kind of went up and down and up and down. and went, no, nah, it looks good. So it's good to see that, boom, here it is. It's awesome. Everyone's loving it. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. And more, because I didn't know it was going to be a cool Metroidvania. Boom, here it is. Prince of Persia Lost Crown. Go check it out on any of your devices. Go check it out now. Indeed. Go check it out. And, you know, a little bit of sad news came up. You know, Rockstar and and uh, Remedy, they've been working together, you know, talking about Max Payne in the past and this and that, and 
There's also rumors that maybe that kind of thing might happen again someday. Who knows? But uh, all that going on. But oh, well, oh, take two. Which is the parent company of Rockstar, apparently, has a dispute. They're upset, Matt. They're mad. Arg. They said that Remedy's new logo, and of course they revealed this logo like last year. So this is a thing in progress. Where apparently it's just coming to light. They're upset, and they've got a dispute over Remedy's logo. They're saying it's too similar to Rockstar's logo, and they think Remedy should change it. And it's not cool, and they don't like it. Of course, it's going to go to court. It's going to have to get decided. And it's not that big a news, but I wanted to bring it up just because we love Remedy here in the old Third Shift house. And, uh, you know, and Matt loves Rockstar, so, and I used to. And uh, I'll just say this. And it's not Rockstar where you, I'm even going to say it's about, but take two. Get out of here. Go kick go kick rocks. Are you kidding me? These two logos are very different from one another. You do not own the letter R, so stop. Just stop it. No, I want to caution you, Eric, because you said go kick rocks, and rock starts with an R. Mm. So you might, and rocks, rocks rock is, is like part rock of rock star. star rock st, mm. rocks. So you, you might, I, if you want me, I can bleep that out so we don't get sued don't here get in third trouble. shift. Using rock, but like you said, it's <laughs> it's very obvious which is which. Yeah. Like we've played Rockstar games forever. That's what their R looks like. This is an R with like a dash and like a shadow R coming after it. Nobody's going to confuse the two. I get it, but it's it's too it's too frivolous. And as people were saying on Twitter, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to try and sue the people who are making your Max Payne one and two remake yeah. that you own the rights to. Maybe don't do that because now you're going to miss out on all that money. Maybe, maybe do maybe don't do that. Maybe just chill out. The, the R isn't even the exact same font. It's a ch- double R. It's a shadow R, just like you said. It literally has remedy, poof, big bold print underneath it. Whereas Rockstar has the R in its own font with a little star. It, it, there's who who confu- who's going to confuse that? Who who's even going to know? And then beyond us diehards who aren't going to confuse it, the casual folks out there don't care. Don't care one bit. They're not looking at your stupid logo from your game. They're just going, I like to kill people and rob stores. I want Rockstar game. Or they're going, I want to go do bodacious weird stuff. I like Control or or Alan Wake. They don't know who the developer is. They don't really care who the developer is. They don't care what your dumb logo is. Stop it. Get out of here. Go away. Everything you said is 100% right. But I mean, from a completely devil's advocate perspective, I do get it because if your logo is an R and somebody else's logo is an R, you filed for R as a trademark logo in the video game space. I get it, but like, come on. Like like we said, nobody's going to confuse the two. They're not trying to steal your thunder. They couldn't even possibly do it from a casual perspective anyway. It's ridiculous. And I'll I'll jump in with another ridiculous thing in this week's episode of Old Man Yells at Twitter Cloud because I mentioned Twitter here and I saw it the other day it was like Monday or some sometime early this week everybody retweeted the headline because everybody cherry picked the headline and and everybody retweeted it on Twitter the headline was Ubisoft CEO says gamers should get comfortable with not owning your games and lit- just it's still going on now like tweets from f- 15 seconds ago people who oh, I'm just going to pirate all the Ubisoft games I'm just going to steal all the stuff if you actually read the article from gameindustry.biz it's an interview with the CEO of the Ubisoft Plus subscription service talking about how they've been doing over the past few years. You know, people coming on, people coming off. Hey, I didn't even mention it, and I should have. That's my fault. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, it's available on the Ubisoft Plus subscription service. So if you don't want to plunk down your money for it, and you have Ubisoft Plus, you could get that for a month, play the crap out of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and then unsubscribe, and then you have not tossed out the full price of a game. So he was talking about that. He was talking about the Ubisoft Classic service, which you can sign up for, I think is only like $7.99 a month on PC and have access to tons of Ubisoft Classic games. So it was an interview about that. And he was saying for subscriptions to grow in this service, people have to feel comfortable with not owning your games, which again, as a collector, it sounds wrong to my ears. But he makes a valid point that people are fine with not owning CDs anymore. People are fine with streaming all their music. When new albums or CDs drop, 
They drop on Spotify and nobody says, oh, a million sales. They say a million streams. What happens with movies? They drop on your streaming service and you may jump from streaming service to streaming service, but not a lot of people buy Blu-rays anymore. I'm the only one I know who does. So taking this quote out of context and blowing it up on Twitter, it's ridiculous. The people who wrote those clickbaity headlines, you're ridiculous too. He's talking about his subscription service, and he makes a lot of good points about it. Like he says, you know, even if you decide to stop playing that game or or drop the subscription service and come back later when something you're interested in comes up, you know, the next few months or whatever, you don't lose the progress of your game. It's still there waiting just for you to have access to it again. Now, granted, this goes into the whole delisted games, and I I don't like gaming as just a subscription, but taking the article and this quote, especially out of context, it's ridiculous. I've seen gaming news YouTubers going off because they didn't even read the article. They just read the headline. Read the article. It's about what you would expect it to be about. He's not saying every Ubisoft game is going to be a subscription. He's not saying that at all. Just, Just know what he's talking about and why he's talking about it. It's a fine article. What he's saying is right for his little area of Ubisoft. It's not that big of a deal. And that's it for angry men yelling at Twitter. There we go. I don't want this to be a weekly segment. It should be a weekly segment. It probably needs to be because somebody's got to yell at Twitter. Somebody's got to get out there and and state some of the just ludicrous, ridiculous things these yahoos on Twitter are fighting or yelling about or talking about because it's it's bad. Somebody's got to get these kids in check. But anyways, that's it. We don't want to go too long with angry men at Twitter this week. A little shorty right here. Foam stars, everybody. All right. And you might think I'm joking, but you know what? I saw it. Matt saw it. We both did the, oh, okay, whatever this is. All right. Square Enix is the ones, you know, putting this thing out, which is the only thing that got me to actually go, well, I don't know. Maybe it'll be cool. I mean, Square Enix is doing it. Square Enix, I love. I love what they do. But anywho's, this game got a little cool private demo for all sorts of different IGNs, games, game spots, all those peeps. And all of a sudden, everyone's coming back saying they actually really enjoyed it, had a great time with it, loved it. It was a lot of fun. Everybody compared it to Splatoon, but it's got a lot of differences from Splatoon. They don't want you to compare it directly to Splatoon. It's a whole thing. you got to do the research and homework on your own if you're interested. I'm only here to tell you that next month, from February 6th through March 4th, if you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you're going to get it. It's yours. You're going to get to have it. You're going to get to play it. And as long as you keep subscribing to PS Plus... You're going to get to keep playing it. Wow. What a cool win. What a big surprise. Very stoked. Get to try it and take a peek at it. And I don't got to worry about, you know, spending my 29 I think it's twenty nine ninety nine otherwise, but something in that range. I don't got to worry about spending that money. I can just go check it out. And if I like it, like I always told Matt, we should have gotten Splatoon, but we never did. Maybe this is where we can get in and do a cool little multiplayer, you know, splooge people up with foam, kick them off the map, have a great time. Now, I will admit, when I saw Foam Stars in there, I, I read, going to be free to PlayStation Plus between, and I saw February 6th, but my brain for some reason went like, oh, February 8th, so a free weekend. It wasn't until right now, right, two seconds before you said it when I reread that line, February 6th to March 4th, so for a whole month, it's free. A free month, free month. Yep. of a game. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Like like you said, I've been interested in it a little bit more than you because I think it looks cool. But I had no idea when it was even coming out. I didn't know they did closed betas. I probably would have gotten into it if I had signed up for it. But now, boom, I get to play it all next month if I want to. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Just like you said. That's what I was, yeah, exactly what I was talking about. We get to actually play it for free. If we think it's cool and great, it becomes a thing, boom, grab it up. But if not, oh, well, I didn't spend twenty nine ninety nine. dollars I can just move on with my life. Or if I get my fill in the one month, same thing. It doesn't matter. I just get to check it out and go uh, decide whether I like it or not or want to stick with it. And, of course, Square Enix came out when this statement came out and talked way more about it and how they intend to uh, support it and a lot like Splatoon have events and things like that, et cetera, et cetera. Go do your homework and check that out if you're interested. But I just want to make you aware it exists. It's going to be a free thing for us. I think that's neat. Yeah, absolutely. And jumping from PlayStation to Xbox, surprise, Eric, Xbox had a developer direct. What? direct with the devs something i can never figure out what it's called but they had an event today with a shout out five devs and showed a little bit more of the games that they're working on and 
I gotta say, I didn't know this was happening until two minutes before it happened, but I did my due diligence. As soon as I got home, I popped it up, I watched the whole thing, except for a little bit I did have to skip because I got paranoid that you'd be on early, but you ended up being on late, but it's fine. The first one they showed off was Avowed from Obsidian Games. I've been excited for it since the last reveal, like the full gameplay reveal thing they did like seven months ago, but I haven't seen anything about it. You know I love Obsidian, I love their writing, I love everything that they do. And the things they said in this presentation, I thought were great. It sounds like exactly what I want. It, a, a weird world that's fun and fantastical and colorful and strange and magical. And you got guns and swords and melee combat and wizard wands. And you can dual wield wands and be a quick spell wizard. And it lives by all the RPG tropes, you know, does all things. Heavy heavy artillery, peeps with the shields, got to do this and that. Uh, light foot troops, you know, you got to make sure you uh, adapt for that situation. All the tropes from RPGs you could imagine, they're all in this game, and that was exciting to me too. But the only thing that didn't excite me was, and I don't, I don't want to sound like a negative Nancy, like a gloomitude Gus, but the only thing that didn't excite me was everything that they showed. Yeah, it didn't look good. Granted, it's supposed to come out in fall of this year. I have to imagine it's going to get pushed back, or this is just like supreme alpha beta footage from even before where they're at in the game right now. Because all the gameplay looked, I don't want to say slow or like bad, but it looked weightless. This looked like one of those VR games where you kind of just swing around and the enemies go, ooh, and they rock back and forth like a, like a weeble. They go, ooh, ooh, and then they fall over. It didn't, it didn't look good. Even the dialogue that was going on didn't look that great, like when you had the dialogue options. Mm-hmm. And I have to imagine this placeholder stuff, all that stuff, but they had the three options. And I went, man, Obsidian is so good with like giving you six options at least. Good option, sort of good, neutral, mean neutral, evil, and like super evil. And this was kind of like, hey, here's three generic things to say to this man. And I went, "Mm, uh, I'm still excited because I love Obsidian and I want them to do well and for this to be good. But uh, it 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 was highs and lows. It was a roller coaster. Yeah, for me, man, you know, I haven't done too much with Obsidian for quite some time, so I don't know. It was, uh, it, I'm excited for it just because of the RPG aspects and everything, but I got to agree with you. The gameplay and whatnot was not making me uh, super hyped, but I'm going to tell you right now, just like Matt said, it's early. This does not mean anything. They were probably just excited to kind of show you the concepts of what they're what they're intending with the characters and what's going on, so i got to imagine it's going to get way better, and you're going to see a lot more animation in the game, a lot more reactive animation, etc. And uh, the dialogue, I'm sure, will change and adjust as they get more lines and get more consequences slash whatever for your actions going. But uh, I don't know. This one didn't do it for me. I didn't come away going, all right, sold. I'm sold. This is a for sure buy. I went, okay, well, we'll see what's going to happen. i got a lot of other games to play. You didn't, you didn't get it for me right off the bat. Now, I'm going to jump in, Matt, and I'm going to go in with a big one for me, Visions of Mana. Dang, dude, that did it. That did it for me. Oh, <laughs> it was beautiful. They've got all the peeps back. Everybody from Old Mana Days is back. And I've told you all before, probably, and if I haven't, this game, these the Mana series. I, don't, I have never played the Mana series. I've watched the Mana series. So this is, and, it, and not just like generically through some YouTuber. No, I used to go to my buddy Dan's house and he loved this series. And I would just sit there for hours on end, eating Doritos, watching Daniel play this game. Just, oh, and then he'd play, you know, later on, years later, playing more. And just, oh, yeah, 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 man, man, oh, this is great. But, you know, back then I didn't have money. I couldn't afford it. He, he, he luckily got these, you know, it was his sacrifice, whereas I chose other games and, and I loved them. They were so just magical to me, the music, and I'm just on the couch, and I got no consequences, nothing. I'm just watching him play. And there was a magic to that, you know? And it was great, and it felt good, and I have awesome memories of it. I want this to be my first one that I play myself, and it's looking gorgeous. The monsters, they're all coming back with a whole bunch of new ones. The soundtrack, they were showing all sorts of different little snippets of this and that, and, then, of course, the OGs from the monasteries are back working on it. 100 100 plus songs in this game and they were talking about how they want to make sure that the music transitions perfectly from battle to out of battle into battle and then through the different scenes to make you really really feel it anytime you talk about music and anytime you talk about them being passionate about making you feel something whenever they're doing it i'm on board 
I'm already like, oh, I'm sold. If you're if you're that in it in your brain that you want the music to tell you a story, I'm on board because I'll tell you what, FF7, that changed my life. You know, that music and that game, regardless if you like FF7 or if it's your favorite or not, that music, just every moment, every scene puts you in there and did its job. And I love it when somebody pays attention to that. Of course, Chrono Trigger did too. Chrono Cross did as well. Many others did therein earlier and thereafter, but that was just one example. I'm excited, man. I can't wait to get my hands on this game. I was already sold. All this did for me was just seal the deal. It's it's in the bucket. It's bought. It's pre-ordered. It's all over. Now, for me, I have played Mana games before. I played Secret of Mana, the first one. I played that with my buddy, Co-op. So I had all kinds of fun with that one. But every other one that I've tried after that, it just hasn't hit the same way. So I want this to hit the same way. When I see it in action, when I see the colorful characters and the, the, the rabbits and all the other classic enemies, it takes me back to those days of carefree days on the couch, and I, I want this to hit. I want it to be something I can, like the Tales series, except mm-hmm. not fall asleep. I want it to be that. But the Tales series is different. Now get on Tales of Arise, you son of a gun. <laughs> But I will say the only thing is the gameplay on this one. It was, again, it, it felt like the avowed gameplay where it was like, oh, here's like a little encounter with three enemies. And he kind of goes, whoosh, whoosh, like his basic sword sweeps. Eventually, I know it's going to be more than that. Once I see a gameplay trailer of them going into the area and attacking enemies and going from one encounter to the next, then I'll get hyped or stay that not that hyped but i want it to be good i want it to be great because i want to go back to those days even if it's just in my head as i'm playing it and just colorful and relaxing and on this nice big beautiful colorful monitor the colors will be popping or even just on my portal the colors will be popping too i want it to be great but i'm not shooting off to the sky excited like you are which you probably should be for senua saga hellblade 2 because they showed off some more of that game and I haven't played the first one yet. I still desperately want to, so I can't get too excited about this one because I don't know enough about the first one. But they went back behind the scenes, showing mocap, showing how that transitioned into the actual game. And I got to say, as the guy who has the nice headphones, whenever I actually watch gameplay of the first one or trailers like this and I have my nice headphones on, the, the audio stuff. You've talked about it before. I've never experienced it. It's so good. Like the whispers are so crisp and you can hear them just... You can hear everything just perfectly. And it makes me excited just for that. Even if, you know, they're pretty short games. They even said it in this trailer. Like, oh, it's a, it's a shorter narrative experience, but we want the presentation and everything to just be like overwhelming the player. And I'm like, that's, that's perfect. You, you, these little unique experiences just like this i want to experience it just for the audio for one thing but we know the graphics look great everything else is looking great but y- this this is an eric one this isn't a me one even though i can admit that it looked freaking great yeah you know, and you say that and you're you're partially right i want it to be a me one i love how it plays with the sound i love how it's the voices inside it's dealing with mental trauma it's dealing with all sorts of you know that that type of issue and that's cool, schnips, all right? I love it. But I feel like they've been dragging on too long, just too long with this one. I'm like, where, where's this damn game at? I mean, it's just like trailer after trailer after trailer after trailer, and then they did it again here, and I'm just like, you guys, just release the game. I mean, you've been showing <laughs> us this stuff for years, years. And I'm like, at some point, I've, I've said it before, you either don't show it off early and wait, you know, let people just think about it and contemplate about it. And then when you're ready, come out and go and land blast everybody. And the only other way to do it is you show one snippet early, early, you know, and you go, boom, it exists, people. Here it is. And then you go silent until you're ready and then do it. Like a themed teaser. Yeah. Like whispers, 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 whispers. And then you see like a dark image coming through. And then it's like all the hands grabbing Senua's face. Mm -hmm. Senua Saga, Hellblade 2, now in development. And that's it. But instead, like you said, they came out with the big cinematic trailer of her fighting like the big giants and going through the big battlefield. Mm -hmm. And it makes you think that they've got so much more already done that it should be like, boom. And then it didn't. It was years again. But I think that was, here's the theme that we're going to work on so the team knows, the team gets the idea, and we release that to the public so they get the idea, and it was too much too soon, like you said. 
was way too soon, and we've waited, you know, just so much longer for it. With the more, it's coming, it's coming, and little little bits here and there. There, you know, a little behind the scenes stuff, and and now this. And don't get me wrong, it looks amazing, it looks great. Can't wait to just get in the headspace and just go nuts again with all this weird schnips going on. But man, talk about just uh, oversaturation. It kind of got to me this time where I'm like, okay, all right, you sure. Sure, you're gonna come out. Oh yeah, sure, you're coming out. It's like what May something? Did you catch Summer that? Sometime I think it was yeah. May something, twenty first or something. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. But it's in May, and I'm like, sure, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. Because they've they've played me along for years now, so I'm like, I don't know. But I I do want to play it. I do want to check it out. It is on the radar. Matt is right. I am excited to play and look at this one. But I just wish they had. Just been quiet a lot longer and just kind of came out just now with the big boomf and got me stoked. Like, well, just like I just talked about, you know, just like my old uh, Visions of Mana did. You know, they, they all of a sudden, they didn't say nothing. All of a sudden, they're like, boom, here we are. Look at all this stuff we got. This game's about to come out in like six months. Woo-hoo, get ready, rock and roll. And I'm like, damn, I'm ready. Let's rock and roll. Now, I will say, we can't talk too much about the fourth game in this showcase, Era History Untold. An homage to four X games like Civ, all those historical type of build your civilization type of games, which I like every now and then. It's that's this is a totally like every two or three or four years kind of game for me. And even watching it, I go, man, I miss those Civ days. Maybe I should check this out. I know this is definitely not an Eric game. I don't have much to say about it. I kind of did have to breeze over this one because I thought in case we were going to start early, I better skip to the end one. But it looks good. This just isn't a, a big time Matt game. But speaking of the end, I didn't know what to expect because we've, we've heard the announcement that this game is in development. Hey, an Indiana Jones game is in development. Now you got to see it in at least somewhat action. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. I expected to see nothing again. But when I looked down at the bar of, of the YouTube bar, I went, that's a big bar. And they showed off a bunch. But what killed me was the very start. They talked to somebody from the development studio, which I'll get to in a second, saying, oh, when Todd Howard says, let's make Indiana Jones, I went, man, that's going to be a thing. And then they cut to Todd Howard. And he said, I've been wanting to make an Indiana Jones game for years. I got the story. I got this thing. What development studio do I know that would be great at making an Indiana Jones game? And I immediately thought of my friends at Machine Games. And I went, wait a minute. Isn't that the Wolfenstein people? Yes, it's the Wolfenstein Games people. So, in a property where the main character is most known for punching Nazis, who is the development team I thought of? The only people that make the punching Nazis games. It just made me laugh. It made me laugh in a, in a, in a, in a good-natured fashion. Because I went, well, of course. And then there were scenes of him like literally punching, punching Nazis, Nazis in the face. Yeah. And I went, yeah, well, that, yeah, I guess it makes sense. Now, I'm so <laughs> torn on this. You can't believe it, man. I, I just can't. <laughs> I watched this. I watched this trailer. Trailer's fine. Indiana Jones is in there. He's doing Indiana Jones stuff. It is based off the olden days with the Nazis there, but they added so much more to it. It took like uh, you know, the original story, but then there's a lot about the circle added and then it, so it's going into new places. It's gonna be in a whole new area, scenery, all that stuff. The vision is there, looks great. Punch of Nazis, pulls out his gun, get one good gunshot in there. I was sad about that. I want to see more because the gunplay is going to be important. I know the whips, you know, Indiana Jones, big thing, but there ain't no way in hell I'm just going to be whipping people around the whole game. I will be shooting folks. That's going to happen. I wanted to see how that gun gunplay felt a little bit more, even though I am solid. I know they got gunplay down. I've played the Wolfensteins, so I'm not stupid, but I wanted to see it. I wanted to make sure. So that all looked good. Didn't have a problem with it. Was fine with it. The uh, the voice actor for Indiana Jones, good enough. You know, good enough. Was, was like, okay, he he sounds close enough where I'm not upset about it. Let me jump in because I agree. I think he did a great job. He did as great a job as somebody can do being Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. But even when I saw the Harrison Ford face in the Indiana Jones, I went, I really hope they don't do a Harrison Ford voice. I want it to be total side tangent, and I'll get back to you. The old Lucasfilm Games point-and-click adventure Indiana Jones games. That person didn't do a Henry Jones Jr. voice. That was not Harrison Ford. It was a guy doing a voice. That's kind of what I wanted. I wanted it to kind of like break out. Mm -hmm. This is a different indie. It doesn't have to be Harrison Ford indie. It doesn't have to be Harrison Ford. But he did do a good job. He did do a decent enough job, so I wasn't upset. But I do agree with you. I think ultimately it probably would have been just a better choice 
to have a different Indiana Jones. But I, I know and understand where they went. It would have upset some people who are just diehard Indiana Jones, classic fans. So no problems. So overall trailer, fine. Overall trailer, great. Didn't have a problem with it. The reason I'm torn, Matt, is you know what I saw the whole time I watched this trailer? Not Wolfenstein. Not Wolfenstein! That's what I saw. Where's my Wolfenstein? I don't care about Indiana Jones. I don't care about nothing. I want Wolfenstein. I want Wolfenstein. That's all I want. I want Wolfenstein. I don't care about it. No. Now, I will say I do want Wolfenstein also, but I only want Wolfenstein with the girls. I don't care about BJ anymore. You will care about him. Go play that damn game, and you will care about BJ, but you're right. The girls matter, and they better be it. If I can't be sis and sis and and open the door and make you go underneath, you got to get the bottom of the door. <laughs> if we can't pep each other up in the next Wolfenstein, it's over. I'm never going to oh, play it. I don't care. If you can't pep, it's over. <laughs> but I will say, again, I said going in, I had no expectations. I didn't know what to expect. This trailer got me because I, you know, when I was a kid, it was Indiana Jones. Like there was a time in my life when the VHS for Last Crusade came out, I watched it every day for what seems like a full year. It was probably like a week. But, you know, at my grandma's house, I'd pop it in. She'd, and then she'd go to the store or whatever. I would get to the end of the movie. I'd rewind it. I'd watch it again. So classic indie is where my heart and soul is at. So watching this, hearing the musical notes, even though it's not original John Williams music anymore, they, they got the feel right. They got the look right. They got the voice mostly right. I won't say I'm sold because we haven't seen enough yet, but I'm right on the cusp of sold. If this pans out, if if we see more gameplay and it looks solid, especially like you know the, the turret sequences, if we see traversal mechanics, they talked about puzzles that you could just find that aren't even required. You could just explore and find some puzzles and unlock things and do stuff like in these temples and these areas. That sounds amazing. If all that pans out, I will be sold. I wanted to to be, mm, you know, analytical, Matt. I couldn't be. I went, yeah, Indiana Jones. The music was hitting. The visuals were hitting. The gameplay was mostly hitting from what we saw. I'm excited. I want this to be really good because it looks like it could be. And they said it takes place between Raiders and Last Crusade, so perfectly in the classic era. I want it to be amazing. It looks great. I'm excited for it right now. I, I am excited. All jokes aside and all little sticks aside, I'm looking forward to it. Machine Games makes great stuff. I love them. I can't wait to see what they're up to next. So I'll probably end up buying this and playing this. But I will, like said, Matt said, wait a little bit longer. I want to see a little bit more before I tell you for sure it's a for sure buy. But uh, but yeah, all jokes not aside as, as well. Somebody better be working on Wolfenstein, I swear to God. If I don't ever see Wolfenstein, and a lot of, I just got to say this because it's hurting my heart because all these dumb podcasters I listen to, a lot of them are saying they don't think they're going to do a Wolfenstein again because it hasn't really been making them a lot of money. It's like a, it's a darling game, but it's not a big seller. And so they think that uh, the failure, failure of, uh, you know, our favorite game in the whole wide world happened, uh, that they might actually drop Wolfenstein and let it go. And, uh, <sighs> I, that if that happens, oh my god, I'm gonna stroke out. I'm gonna stroke out. I can't imagine that they would, but at the same time, I I didn't know it wasn't a very good seller. So you you gotta at least you gotta at least finish the story. I know because you what went, I said. you you went and you saw the alter. It was the, already the alternate, ultimate history, ending, and, you and know now what you're like happened. alternate alternate history yeah. going in. You gotta finish You've that. Gotta story. do one more. If you don't, even just like release it as a cinematic or something like a, a digital motion comic something stupid i gotta see what happened to sis and sis and if they go into the alternate alternate history what happens to sis and sis and sis and sis and then bj two bjs can i don't know they well, can the run bjs are there the so thing. they'll be helping dad out don't you worry I, I, about I, that. I know i know i'm but just saying we sis already and talked sis about this we had a whole we had the game planned out for him in an episode a long time ago we talked about right. what to do go go find that episode folks you'll you already know what it should what it should do <laughs> Jeez. So what about you out there in podcast listener land? Are you excited for Sis and Sis? Are you excited for any of this other stuff? Are you excited for Foam Stars? Are you the guy who retweeted a bunch of stuff about Ubisoft this past week, and now you're going, oh, man, Matt saw my tweets. He's calling me out. Are you, are you a Take-Two 
executive saying, oh, those logos are too simple. Or do you just want to say hi? Do you want to send us questions, comments, concerns? Do any of that stuff via the email, thirdshiftmegmail.com, on the Twitter machine at thirdshiftme. Find us on Facebook under Third Shift. Hit the Discord, the Patreon. Hit up my house. We'll talk about sis and sis. Well, you know what? Since we didn't do the sis and sis cosplay, show up in your own sis and sis cosplay at my house. I will absolutely let you in, no matter what. I mean, I'm I'm not saying that like in a creepy way. Matt, you way. can grab the bottom of the door too, won't you? You can grab that bottom of the door and you'll let them. You'll scooch it over. So I can come you in. know what? If they show up as sis, I will be the bottom of the door. Lift up the elevator door. I'll do it. It's fine. I won't do it for you, but I'll do it for you, the listener who shows up in the cosplay. What if I'm the one who finally dresses up in the cosplay? That's the <sighs> ah yeah, gotcha, don't I? <laughs> so what I'm gonna have to do is have like a can of like black hair dye and i'm like oh that's cool eric hang on i gotta use the restroom and i'll show up do the spritz the the ronco spritz <laughs> show up ah! and i'll just run in and start lifting up the door and you go ah damn it oh he got me that sounds like fun that sounds like a lot of fun folks and if you want that to happen you know what also go check out the patreon because it's a little tip jar something you can do for us keeps the lights on keeps matt in his house keeps me in my house Keeps the bills paid so that you can hear this episode on the old internets. You got to do those things. If you don't, well, the lights might go out. You know, how long can I persuade the wife to let me keep spending money on this? Probably not long. It's up to you. You folks have kept it on for this long, and I appreciate the hell out of it. So, God forbid, I have to fight and struggle to keep this going every week. I already get myself in enough trouble, folks. And if you're married, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Anywho. With that being said, if you can't support us that way, that's fine. All jokes aside, you can mailbag questions. You can talk to us on the discords. Anything you want to talk about, we're there. We will respond, I promise you. We'll talk to you. We'll have some good times. Or, hey, five-star ratings on the iTunes, five-star ratings on the Spotify. There's probably five-star thumbs-ups on other things, too. Go do those. Just get our name out there. Get us bigger, better, and badder than ever before so we get more peeps listening. And then all of a sudden, we're big names, and we're taking over the world. And then we're getting that million-dollar donation. Then we're opening up a freaking food line. All sorts of fun stuff. It could happen all because of you. I really wish you hadn't talked about the greatest game ever made because now that's all I can think about. Like In my head, I'm like, you know. You know, we had another playthrough, remember? We were, do- we were in the middle of another playthrough. I was going to say, because I finally bought it, mm-hmm. you know, on sale. So I'm getting trophies. I only have half of the playthrough trophies. Yeah. So, you know, instead of like doing shift a monthly topic tomorrow when you got to stay up late anyway, we should just play Wolfenstein Youngblood. You know, I'm just, or, or you know, playing Remnant 2 ever. Nah, I let's know. just play Wolfenstein Youngblood. Instead of playing Foam Stars, nah, let's just play Wolfenstein Youngblood. Instead of playing Baldur's Gate 3, nah, let's just play Wolfenstein Youngblood. And it even sounds great right now. Because where we left off, there's like... That's what I'm telling you! Did yeah. We, did we beat that dumb Mecco giant? Did we get past that when we played last time? The Can't second remember. time? We got annoyed by him because he was kicking our butts. But did we f- beat him Well, before we quit? We must have. I think we did. I think we did. Because he, he, he smashed us again like two or three times. And we're like, okay, 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 okay. Got to stop. Got to pay attention. There's no way we wouldn't have done it. There's, there's no, no, there's no way, no we, way we would have given up. So we've got to be past that yeah, yeah, and yeah. on to the next few missions that are pretty breezy easy until we get to that one sewer mission that sucks. And then, of course, that factory mission with all the big bosses. And then, of uh-huh. course, the final boss after that. So <laughs> we could do it. Yeah, we could do it. And something that you can do out there, listeners, is listen to the very next episode, which will be dropping on or around. Well, no, it will be on the 24th of January, the day before I fly out to go and be on a boat for the better part of a week. And you can find that episode on iTunes and Stitcher on Podbean and Spotify and on YouTube. But as I always say, hey, if you like what we're doing, you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, a view, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services because it does help us out. And we really do appreciate it. Indeed, we do appreciate it. We appreciate it so very much. Just like we appreciate the five-star reviews. One of these days, we're going to get another new one. It's going to be great. It's going to be the best. I'm going to be so happy about it. But until then, I'm going to lament, and I'm going to be sad. And uh, I hope you're okay with that. I hope you're okay with me being sad. And I almost cheated the system. I looked again before the episode. I went, surely we've gotten one. We didn't get one. And I thought, should I just start reading them out again, like every few weeks? Hey, here's a five-star review from... Or is this where we cheat? And I do a five-star review for us. There we go. Now we're talking. Because that hasn't happened yet. I could, I could go on there and give give myself a, and you a five-star review. 
I mean, I still haven't cheated yet. That person who said that Matt was the greatest podcast host, that wasn't me. It was definitely that was not somebody you. else. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not Matt who did that. So you could definitely go have your real Matt account and that did it. Yes. But I haven't cheated at all in the fake sense or the real sense. So who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll just do my own since I can't rely on you folks, okay? <laughs> turned it around quite expertly but hey until the next time you hear us until the next time you write into us until the next time of anything there's nothing else to say but don't forget shut up and sit down